Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Jones from Designs and Machine Embroidery and welcome to Software Success. So we're excited to be here as always and uh, today we've got some fun information for you and you guys know us here, we are talking all things software. So any dime software, um, I will be going over on one of these episodes. So, and even if you don't own the software that I'm talking about, I bet you will still learn something about your dime software. So make sure you tune in each time we have or watch the replay. All of these software success are available on our YouTube channel. Um, you can also find them on our Facebook page and you can rewatch them as many many times as you like. So I see lots of familiar names piping in. So um, tell us where you're watching from. We'll give a few minutes for everyone to uh, join and say hi. Um, glad to be here with you. So thanks for joining as always, Laura from Lincoln, Nebraska. So uh, good to see you. And so, hey, Judy Rhodes, nice to have you here uh, with us today. So always amazed at what these programs to do. Hey, Judy, me too. <laughs> Sometimes I play and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that, you know, we can do that. So um, it's always fun to see some some new stuff. So Aileen, so hey, nice to see you, Aileen. So uh, thank you for joining. Um, she said she was afraid she had watched, uh, have to watch the recording later. Well, I'm glad that you made it. So um, and my neighbor to the north, Harriet Ann Palmer, thank you for being here as well. Dawn from Creative Applique, good to see you. Uh, Laurie Albrecht, she's part of our education team here. So thanks for, for joining. So Maggie, hello from Wisconsin. Good to see you. I'm glad that you're here with us. So Donna, thanks for joining. So 6 a.m. Uh, Donna, I feel so blessed that you got up so early uh, to be here. So I think I would have slept and watched the replay. So um, Laura, thanks for uh, being here as well. So Julie, uh, Sandy, thanks for joining Sandy. Good to see everyone. Um, so hope you guys are all doing well. Um, and, uh, I'm excited to share with you today, something that you may be unfamiliar with, with dime, uh, software. And, um, it's has to do with designing fabric prints. So, Hey, thanks for joining rain. So rain from embroidery gardens, you guys know her. Um, so I'm glad she's here with us here today. So in Josie Bradley, so thanks for joining from Michigan and uh, frequent flyer, Jennifer Alexander. Thanks for being here, Jennifer. So we still have lots of people uh, joining. Um, and so say hi, say where you're watching from. So Joanne Banco over there, let's go. So hey, Joanne, always good to see her too. Um, so I missed you guys two weeks ago. So I actually had laryngitis and could barely squeeze out a whisper. Um, my voice, as you can tell, is back, but it does get kind of raspy from time to time. So but I think it'll hold out uh, just fine. So but today we're going to be talking about um, my fabric designer. It's a probably a lesser known program from uh, Dime, but it allows you to design a print with artwork. And then there are tons of places out there on the internet where you can print your fabric on demand. So you guys may be uh, familiar with some of those. There's uh, um, Spoonflower is one that I know is commonly known, although it was kind of the leader in that print on demand. There are many more now and they're all across the world. So what we're going to talk about today is how you can create a fabric print, whether it be a repeatable or seamless pattern, or maybe you want to design, look at that image on the screen there. Maybe you want to design like a cheater quilt that's personalized. Um, you can do that and then print it from these print on demand companies. Um, now, I do think that the majority of the time we're going to go to the fabric store and buy fabric. But if you're looking for something extremely specific or custom, um, this is a really awesome way to do it. But then there's also a printer out there. I know Brother released a printer called Print Moda that prints uh, fabric. It has rolls of fabric that you feed in that it can print on. And I'm also going to show you how to size for that today. So you can use this program to print on, um, on your uh, Print Moda fabric. You could also print from a regular fabric uh, um, home printer if you've got those sheets that feed in. But really, we can do that on 
you know, almost anything uh, really because it's prints on an eight and a half by 11. So we're really talking printing larger scale and designing for that today. So I'm going to be using my fabric designer. That's the dime software that I'm going to be talking about today. But remember, if you're not an owner of my fabric designer, I'm also going to show you how to add that text on that uh, quilt. And then we're also using some other built in tools that you will be familiar with from other dime programs. So just because because you don't own my fabric designer doesn't mean that that there's still not some part of today's uh, live that wouldn't be informational for you. So um, so we're going to talk about building that repeatable pattern, which uses artwork tools, which we have in a lot of our dime software. We're going to be talking about doing that uh, text that's on Evan Mar Morrow, which is a uh, text e either in the form of true type or embroidered text is also in a lot of our uh, software as well. So a repeatable pattern that's um, I'm going to show you that first, because I do think this is just like a really cool feature to design a repeatable pattern pattern in um, uh, other software like Adobe um, software is a little more complicated and um, well, I shouldn't say complicated, but it's complex. Like you really got to know a lot. So we've simplified it for you so that you can be a, um, a pattern designer and a print pattern designer and, and it's really simple and you don't have to have a lot of graphic artist type skills. Um, and then again, I'm going to show you how to design this uh, cheater quilt and you could also use this method to maybe make a panel if you want, but also uh, you can do other things with my fabric designer as well. Um, so not only can you do the repeatable repeatable pattern in the cheater quilt that we're going to be talking about today, but um, you can also design cut and sew projects as well. So if you've got a shape that you want to fill with um, designs or images, you could print that and it's already got the pattern on there. So that's a possibility. And you can also import photos into my fabric designer software and design, um, you know, memory quilts where you're just printing them all uh, on the actual fabric as well. So here's an example of a cut and sew project so that uh, our team from our My Fabric Designs team did uh, for one holiday season um, where it's a vest and it's added all of these different elements in. And then when you print this, you can see it's the shape of your pattern because you'll make it the right size for the fit that you need. And then you can print that. Um, but look at this. How cool is this? So um, a memory quilt where you are using photographs and actually printing that. So that entire um, uh, quilt top is printed. It's not seamed. Um, it is printed with the pictures and the colors and the blocks and everything. So you can use it to print uh, things like this as well. So, but remember when you're printing, we are referring to printing at a print on demand service. So before you get started designing fabric or a quilt planet, uh, quilt panel, I do recommend finding out from the place that you want to print what width their fabric is is so you can design with that in mind. So a lot of them print like 54, 56 inches wide. So one yard is, uh, you know, even wider than our normal fabric that we would get from our favorite quilt shop. So, uh, so let's head over into my fabric designer and, and talk about that designing process. Um, and we'll start with that repeatable pattern and then uh, go on to that uh, quilt. And then of course, you guys know, if you have questions, uh, ask along the way. So um, I'm going to just start a new workspace so you can see that I don't have anything on my page. And I am using, again, the program called My Fabric Designer from uh, Designs and Machine Embroidery. So you can see that it is uh, checkmarked here in my um my sequence area where my shopping cart is. So my fabric designer is what we're doing. So my fabric designer, um, we're going to start, let's do the repeatable pattern first. So I'm going to click on the canvas tool. That's the first thing I get started. Um, and these are my options here. So we've got a free um, option where you just design on the screen with no measurements. Um, you've got a cloth option where you can set and just, you know, it, it's kind of free um, designing, but you're you're still setting the size. And then there's tile, which means that we're going to design one area and then it's going to tile the scene. It will reap 
uh, um, repeat that print over and over and over. And then we also have the option to design a quilt uh, panel or um, a printed cheater quilt as well. Um, and then uh, this was added actually during the um, COVID timeframe where we are um, doing, you know, we're doing masks. So that's what these options here are where you can create those um, cut and sew mask as well. So I'm going to start with the tile. So remember tile, think of it as like a, uh, you know, uh, tiling a scene and repeating a pattern. So to set the size, I just click this options here and it will allow me to set the size. So if you look at any fabric, it's your favorite fabric store, then um, you guys know that there's a certain area that is designed and it repeats over and over and over. So you set your area here for what uh, size area you want to repeat. Maybe it's an, uh, an eight by 12, maybe it's an uh, eight by eight, you know, whatever size you want to set to create your repeatable pattern, you set it here. And when you click OK, you can see that it puts that square on my screen. So that is my eight inch block because we set eight inches. Now, anything I put in this square, um, it's going to uh, be the basis of our design and then it would repeat um, when we saved so we could do our print. So I'm going to go over into our sequence view and in your your uh, design options here with your my with your uh, my fabric designs, you get some free artwork. So when I scroll down, it says my fabric designs here and I press the plus and I have all of these uh, categories that are just artwork that you can use. Now, if you own um, any other dime software, these artwork images certainly can be used anywhere, but you can see there's tons of different options here. So I'm just going to start with bringing in some of these little uh, rockets here. So, and just show you what I mean. So I'm just going to create, say you're going to create this cute little, um, uh, fabric for a little kid's print or something. And I'm going to just uh, put a few of these on here and I'm going to leave so, uh, some of them just kind of hanging off like that. And just we'll grab a few more of these cute little designs here and sprinkle them around. Now notice that whenever I have one hanging off the edge, it shows down below or either on the left and the right, like a ghosted image of this. That is um, part of the design element of this software helping you create a repeatable pattern. So because for instance, if we did not realize that this was hanging off and part of it's going to print over here, you may have this uh, spaceship kind of overlapping and we don't want that. So now I'm going to just pull a few into view and just have, uh, you know, just that one hanging off here and I'm just positioning them kind of random just so I can show you. And this option here, so all I have done so far is I've set the size and I have pulled some artwork onto the screen. This artwork could be built in. This could be artwork that you bring in. It really doesn't uh, matter. We're really just designing at this point. So if I click these little preview glasses here, look what it does. So I'm going to pull this over my background image. Um, but look at that pattern we just created. So we only designed that 11 inch area, but it uh, is showing what it's going to look like when it's printed um, for the 56 inches or, you know, repeated however large you need it to print. So, but isn't that pretty cool? So you don't have to be a designer or a, a graphic artist to be able to use this software. It's, you know, really quite simple. Now, you can certainly use any of the built-in artwork that you see um, uh, here. You can bring in your own artwork, but you can also do uh, simple things as well. So let's do another page and let's do another tile scene. <clears throat> and for this one, I'm just going to leave it 10 by 10. And then now let's fill the background color. I've got these options to uh, fill with a pattern or I can fill with just a color option too. So I'm just going to choose the color option. 
and then click in the box and you can see that it fills it with this blue. It's actually pulling from my color chip down here at the bottom. So those of you that are familiar with our other software know that I can uh, select these different color chips here and change the color. So let me click on number one and then I could change that to uh, say this light green here. Okay, so now um, that we have filled our background color, if we click the preview, you can see that it's repeating the pattern. Now those blue lines that you see are the stroke on the outside of our filled block. So if you don't want those to print, make sure that when you select it over here in your sequence view, you click the equals and that's going to make your outside, that line around the outside of your block, that stroke color, the same color as your block itself. Now let's look at the repeat and you could see if we were to print this, we would get a solid green piece of fabric. Now we would probably just go to our quilt store and buy our green, right? So to create a custom design, we're going to add some more items uh, to this. So instead of um, artwork this time, let's do, uh, let's draw our, uh, some rectangles. So now with our artwork drawing tools, so here um, on the toolbar, this is our artwork tool. I can draw these shapes just by clicking and dragging. So I'm just going to click the rectangle and I'm going to click and drag to make a uh, rectangle shape here. And I'm going to make this much larger than my, my 10 inch area. And you'll see why here in just a second. And then that particular shape, I want to fill it. So if I go over to my properties, I can choose fill and click apply. And now I've got this one red line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this several times. So um, I'm going to choose my repeat tool. And again, there are other dime software that has repeat. So you can do these same tasks that I'm doing here. Um, and so this is a, a lesson for you in uh, other dime software as well. So if I do um, adjust my, my options here, so I'm going to do four bars and I'm going to space them um, let's space them a quarter of an inch apart. So that gives me a little, a little bit of space. Let's do a half inch. I want a little bit more space than that. And that's just, you know, personal preference. Okay. And so then I'm going to say, okay. And now I have four perfectly spaced bars. So I'm going to select these and change colors. So I'm going to change to, uh, some more pastel colors here and maybe this turquoise and purple. So we're getting close to uh, Easter. So that'd be a cute little Easter print, right? Now, remember that if I want that outline not to print separately, I need to click this plus for matching the stroke there. And so I had selected each one of these. So I held down my control key and select all four of those. And I click this equal sign right here and it makes the stroke color the same as the outside. So now with those selected, I'm gonna copy and paste. Also a feature that we have in a lot of Dime software, it does paste right on top. But if I look at my sequence view here, I can see I have um, a total of eight different objects. So I know it did the copy. And then I'm just gonna use my rotate feature and rotate those around. So I'm creating like a plaid look. So now that I've got my plaid option, I'm gonna select all of them. So I'm gonna go down uh, to my sequence view, hold down my shift key and select all of them and then uh, rotate to uh, put right in the center of my block here. Now, I didn't completely cover my corners, so I did not make it uh, long enough. So when we watch our preview, watch what's happened. So we've got this break in our plaid, which actually kind of looks cute. So I didn't plan for that to look so cute, but it actually kind of looks cute. And so you could certainly leave it that way, or um, you can select your shapes and just resize them longer so that it extends out past. Now this is that resize and it actually made my um, my shapes also a little bit wider, which in this case I'm fine with, but if you don't want it to do that, uh, then you could just uh, resize, rotate back straight and probably resize. So, okay. So now if I click my preview, look at that. Isn't that cool? 
So super easy uh, to create a uh, repeatable pattern. Now, when you're when you've created this um, and you're ready to print it. So if this was the fabric that you wanted to print, um, then when you choose this send option here, it's going to ask you your fabric width. This is where, remember I said that you want to research where you want to print before you start your designing so that you can enter uh, your exact quilt uh, or your fabric width. Um, we've already got some presets in here for you that you can uh, uh, choose from. A lot of them I find 56 is, is kind of a common size for the width. Even our, our quilting cotton, um, you can uh, enter that amount um, and it'll save out that image for you. And when you click export, it actually exports an image file that you would then take to the printer in order to um, upload and print your custom fabric. Now that's a repeatable or seamless pattern. You've heard uh, them called. And so that's how you would create that in my fabric designer. So before we go on to the uh, the quilt layout, let's uh, see if we have any questions or comments that we uh, need to, to answer. Um, and so I'm just scrolling down and looking for, thank you for putting those question marks. Hey, Jill, thanks for joining. So Harriet Ann Palmer, thanks for putting those question marks there. That helps me pick it out of the, the list. So it says, can you use pictures instead of artwork? You absolutely can use images. Now, a, a lot a lot of people, let me just preference with saying, uh, sometimes when people print an image, they will print it on a printable fabric that you can feed through your inkjet or your laser printer. And we're printing like an eight and a half by 11. But if you want to print an image that's larger than your printer capabilities, you certainly can uh, do this. And if say the printer that you're using uses a 56 inch wide fabric, if you want to cut your pictures out, you could just space them print them on a 56 inch wide by however long you need. And then when that fabric shows up, cut your pictures out, or you can create the whole quilt uh, um, so that it prints as a panel, which I'm going to show you coming up next as well. So, um, so yes, you can import pictures to do that as well. So, and then Elaine says, do I need another program to use this or is it standalone program? Elaine, it's actually a standalone program. You do not need any other dime uh, program to make this work. Uh, and everything that I'm using today, I have it isolated so that I'm only showing you the features within this software. So anything that you see me do today, you will be able to do on that uh, standalone version as well. So, um, so yeah, really great question. And most all of Dime software is standalone. So, and then Terry, thanks for joining another uh, frequent flyer here. So thanks for being here with us. So can you print fabric from a uh, photo. So, um, so yes, yeah, say you are uh, repairing a vintage family quilt. Wow. That is a great use of a printed photo for sure. Yes. You can import an image and print it. And just remember, so if, if uh, you are just printing one photo and you're not doing multiples, then you certainly could just upload the folder photo to the print on demand. When you are printing photographs, the other thing I will give you as a tip is to make sure you have a photo that has a really good resolution. Um, the better the resolution, the larger you can print the uh, the photo. If you try to enlarge a photo um, that doesn't have a high resolution, then of course it will be blurry and won't have a good print um, on it. So, and then and some of the print on demand services too. When you upload, it'll actually tell you that the that the resolution is not you know good enough for what you're trying to print and the size and things like that. So, um, and then. And would this work with the new brother fabric printer? Um, yes, it will, Jennifer. So I'm going to show you how you can create a um, the size that you need for that fabric. So um, the brother print motor Moda printer um, has a specific width and then a max length. And of course, you can adjust it. So I'm going to show you that coming up and then a couple of ideas of what you can do with that as well. So uh, Laura, so the format. So when we export a design, it will export with a JPG um, for a um, JPEG or PNG, which is most of what you will upload to the um, uh, online printer. So it is uh, 
fo photo formats. So that's what you're printing as you're creating a design. It exports as an image. And then that image would be uploaded to a print on demand service uh, um, to be able to actually print your design that you've created in My Fabric Designer. So uh, how would you superimpose a pattern such as a vest with the cut lines? So you need to get your vest pattern into the software and you would import that by choosing uh, the load backdrop feature. And I've done a lot of videos on uh, load backdrop. And so I can show you when we go back over there where you would find that. But your pattern piece, you're going to want to either take a photograph as flat as possible or scan it in. If you have a scanner, you could scan it in segments and then, uh, you know, uh, seam it together uh, digitally, seam it together. Um, and then you want something on your end image that will help you define the scale so that you know that you're getting the right size uh, to your pattern. So, and I don't have a pattern to specifically show you, but I will show you how to uh, um, load a backdrop and set the scale. Um, I don't have a pattern that I have particularly um, scanned, but you know, when you take a photograph of your pattern, it's going to work just like the image I show you. So I'll show you how to do that as well. And then you can plan your design uh, right on your pattern um, as well. So, so, and then how do you find a printer who prints on fabric? So if you Google, Linda, if you Google uh, print on demand services, there are so many that will come up, um, you won't believe. So I didn't specifically name any. Um, Spoonflower is one that I know a lot of people know, but there are many more now. Um, there's also uh, Fabrics on Demand, I think is another one. But don't specifically go off of what I'm saying Google it, search it on your favorite search engine and uh, look for ones where you are. So because uh, they may be out of the country. So if you're not here in the U.S., there are print on demand companies that actually are in other countries. So you do the search and then find out, uh, you know, if it's prints in the U.S., if that's where you want to order from or if it's overseas, um, make sure you're finding a service that would work best for you. So another really great question, but print on demand, uh, you can search print my own own fabric, um, you know, things like that. And you'll, trust me, you'll find many of them. There's uh, a ton of them these days. So really good questions. So keep those coming. So now um, let's head back over and then I'll show you the backdrop about um, importing a backdrop, but then I'll also show you um, how to create a printable, like a cheater panel, but you can also, um, used to design an entire quilt. So I'm going to open up a new workspace again, and I am going to do file and load backdrop. So if you're working with a pattern um, for um, a garment or something that you've cre created, use the load backdrop feature. It will allow you to select um, an image that you have imported. So I'm just looking through some backdrops that I already have. Let's do this letter uh, E, for example. And when it comes in, you can see that this photograph is actually taken on a cutting mat. So I know that this right here is a one inch area. I may not know how tall my letter is, but I um, certainly can uh, create this um, uh, as a one inch area. So if I choose my um, backdrop flyout tool here, and this is actually the same way you would do this in any dime software that has a backdrop option, choose the define scale and then click that area. So if I click and I drag that one inch area, I actually should zoom in to get closer on it. So I'm going to do that. And it's actually, this one's actually already uh, to scale, but let me uh, zoom in here. And then I'm going to do that one more time over here on my backdrop cho tool, choose define scale. So if I put my cursor here, click and drag to uh, this one inch area, and release, then you can see that it says 1.02. So this is already to scale and I can just remove the 0.02 and it does make that adjustment. So now when you uh, design on top of or you draw this shape, then it is to scale. So you can be able to design right on top of it. So the next thing that I would probably do is trace this shape with my artwork pen tool. So my artwork tool up here in the top 
The drop down right next to it has the pin option. The pin option lets me trace any shape that I want. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that. I was just clicking around. So your pattern, you could then uh, click around this shape. Now, let me undo this again because I see that I have my snap to grid and anchor points on. So I'm doing a right mouse click on my ruler bar and I'm unchecking all of these things that say snap um, because then that'll let me make my uh, mark wherever I want. So to trace this shape, I'm just clicking around it and I'm not going to do the whole thing and, uh, you know, really perfectly, but I just want you to get the idea. And then you could chase your trace your shape and work with uh, putting your design right on top of it. So, and I, whoop, that was a really bad one. That was so bad, even I can't live with it. So <laughs> I can just click around here, um, and then I'm just clicking, 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 and not being perfect. So if you're doing this for real, you're going to click to make your shape, and then. The very last point, I'm actually not going to uh, click the last one and I'm going to click the C on my keyboard and it will automatically close it for me. So the C on my keyboard automatically closes it. And you're asking, how do I know that? So right now I can't point to it because if I point to it, it goes away. But right here underneath my color chips, um, I'm going to uh, choose my artwork tool again. And uh, look underneath my color chips. It says input artwork points and it has some shortcuts for you. So that works with any dime software that has a, an artwork tool. And if I hide my backdrop here, you can see my hor horribly drawn <laughs> letter E. Um, but this is a way that you can trace that pattern. And then you can design uh, right inside of the shape of the E in order to uh, get your, your print exactly how you want it. So that was really really a, a quick and, and dirty uh, way to do that. So now let's design our quilt um, because this is a different layout and then we'll answer uh, some more questions on that as well. So, okay, so I started a new workspace and I'm going to choose my canvas option. Um, and in this case here, I am gonna use the quilt option. And then I'm going to say, OK, now it opens up a different page here because it's going to uh, build this virtual quilt size for me. And the one that I'm going to work with, I'm going to do a, a quilt that's 38 inches wide by 50 inches tall. And then my block size, I'm going to do 36 by 6. And the reason it looks like this is because my math isn't working out. So I'm going to remove my uh, sashing here and change to rectangular because I want it to be 36 inches wide by six inches in height. OK, and then for my border. I'm just adding that uh, one inch border all the way around uh, my quilt block there. And I'm going to do the miter for the corners. So you can see what it's done is it's actually taking my measurements and it has built my quilt. Now, this is a feature that you probably recognize from our My Quilt Planner. So if you own My Quilt Planner, we're doing a very similar thing, only we're not designing um, our quilting layout, we're designing for a print. Okay. So I'm going to say, okay. And it puts my quilt on my page, but it's actually really closely zoomed in. So here's a shortcut for zooming to fit what's to the screen. So if you double click your zoom tool in any dime software, it'll actually zoom in, uh, to fit what's on the screen. So double click that zoom tool and it will zoom in for you. Um, zoom to fit. So, okay. So now we've got these, uh, just blocks printed. So we're going to fill these, uh, with one of these options. So now we've got the option to fill it with quilt blocks. We've got the option to fill it with patterns or to fill it with a palette color. So if you want a solid color, you would do what we did earlier and then you would click and then click in one of those boxes to fill that uh, that solid color. But for this example, if I click on my fill with pattern option, I have uh, my fabric library. Now look at these, actually these fabrics, you may or may not have them in your uh, library, but notice that little minus there. That is not able to be printed. Um, those fabrics are not the proper resolution. So to print, 
uh, fabrics. We have um, options that we give you from the My Fabric uh, Designs category. And these are high resolution prints that someone else has created and stored in this software for you to be able to uh, print on your own. Okay. So I'm going to be doing this kids section here. And I'm going to start by choosing these little bicycles and say, OK, and then I'm going to click here um, in this third cell from the top and then third cell from the bottom. And then let's go back into our patterns and choose the select option here. And then from the uh, the kids option here, I'm going to choose these little um, transportation vehicles and I'm going to click and click. Okay. And I'm filling just that block with that pattern. And I can actually make adjustments to that, which we will talk about. And so I'm going to go back and select one more before we start talking about that. I'm going to stay in the kids category here and then scroll down to these little rubber duckies and click and click. Okay. And so now we've got, you know, this built. Um, and then for these two panels here, I'm going to go back to our solid color um, and then fill both of these. But I'm going to choose a, uh, a lighter color. So these two blue options here, I'm going to click down below and I can either right mouse click on a different color um, or I can change the color that's selected. So I'm going to do uh, just like this buttery kind of yellow here, I think will look just fine. Now, the last thing I want to do is, do you see this space that we did around the edge? That is the border. So what I would like to do with this is choose a solid print here and fill that border. So it's actually going to print this cheater panel quilt for me. And it's actually going to print that border. And again, we can change that color if we want. So if I click on the blue chip, I can change it to maybe an orange color, which is actually what was uh, printed. And uh, you can make that any color you want. So, okay. So what we've done is we've built our, our quilt. This is a 30 inch by 50 long. So we're not filling up our 56 inch wide if you're going to print this um, on the width. Um, and so you certainly could fill the rest of that space up with um, something else so that you don't waste that fabric from the printer. But let's add some text here for the Evan Morrow. So built in, we've got the option for true type text. So I'm going to choose my text tool. So let me undo here. I'm going to click on my text tool, which is the capital T, and I'm going to click one time on my workspace. And it actually drops the word text. So let me zoom in here and you can see the word text, but this is really tiny. So we're going to make this much larger. So I'm going to go back to my select tool and resize this really large here. And then double click to zoom out to everything. And then over here in my text, I'm going to change that. And in this case, uh, we did this little baby's name. So Evan Morrow to make a custom uh, quilt for little Evan. Okay. And you can change the font type by selecting the drop down list. Uh, maybe something uh, really bold uh, would be good. So I'm going to go up to this, um, I'm looking for the Bernard font. I think that's one that most of us have here. And I think that's a good one. Um, it's nice and bold and it has uh, some character to it. And then you can put that where you want this to print. So by resizing here, um, you can put that right over that blank area. And if you want to add a personalization, I'm going to just copy and paste this same text and then just move it down and maybe resize it a little bit smaller. So when I click those corner squares and drag my mouse in, it resizes uh, proportionately smaller if you drag it out bigger. Okay. So uh, let's say that, um, you know, Evan was, was, was mar uh, married, not married, December. He's too young to be married. So he's a baby quilt. So December, um, uh, maybe 20th, 2023 and click apply. 
and we've changed that to the date. Now, if I use these uh, shapes, so the corners resize proportionally, but if I hover, let me zoom in here so you can see my mouse. Do you see whenever I have my select tool selected and I hover over any of these shapes, it turns to a double arrow and that means I can then resize it. So what I did was I resized this, um, squished it in narrower instead of making the entire thing larger or smaller. So there you can add a personalized date. Now that's just a solid color. You can also fill your text with patterns. So let's go back into the pattern fill and uh, um, click the select. So if I click this right now, it has a little um, droplet next to it. It's actually going to fill with the last pattern that I had selected, which are, are the little ducks. To get another one, you're going to click the drop down and choose select, and it goes back into your library. And for this one, um, I would choose a print that is a little smaller so that you can actually get the full effect. So I'm going to choose this little hound's tooth in the geometric and click OK. And then you can see I've still got my little droplet. And so when I click on Evan, whoop, I'm going to do an undo um, and click right on the, uh, the letter E. So I'm going to undo that twice and then click in that. So maybe it didn't like that I already had a pattern in there. So I just undo until it's solid. So, and so now my actual pattern is, uh, printed as well in my name. Now, if you do choose a pattern that's too large, you can adjust the size of it. So if I select my um, Evan Morrow over here and I go to my fabric tab, I can actually adjust the scale of the print. Now, I don't know about you, but my fabric from my fabric store doesn't resize like this. So it's actually kind of nice and I can actually change the offset as well. So if you're not seeing a particular part of the, the fabric that you want, then you can change that uh, here in the property. So let's go up and we'll look at it on uh, one of these prints here as well. So let's go up to... Um, you know, the bikes, that's fine. So when I select it, you can see here that I can change the scale on any of these fabrics. So maybe I want the bike print to be a little smaller so that it kind of works uh, the same size as our little toys here. And then I can also move this around to make sure I'm getting a particular part of the print um, in my block there. So isn't that cute? So, and again, uh, when you're ready to print, uh, you're going to use the export feature and then it's going to save this as the size of the fabric that you choose as an image. So this is taking a little bit because it's generating the image. Um, but now remember, like most of the time, it might be a 56 inch check with the printer that you're going to use um, and then uh, fill in this space. So since this is not 56 inches wide, what I would probably do is now that I've done my designing, if I go back and change my cloth uh, um, size here or either use freehand, I can click OK. And then now I can just draw some big boxes out here. So why not create a rectangle and fill that with some sort of color that matches that you could say, uh, do your binding if you want, or, um, you know, you could print another pattern, something that's completely separate. So I just changed it from uh, outline to fill. And so then that way I'm fitting my entire, um, um, covering my entire fabric instead of wasting it. Because if you only print this size quilt here um, and you're printing on a 56, you're just going to get white fabric. So why not put a, a square there for your binding or something of that uh, um, nature? And then let me go over here back to my um, PowerPoint. And before we do our q and I'll show you uh, that print and what it was like. So that was the photos that we talked about. So yes, you can do uh, photo printing as well. Um, but take a look at this, the Evan Morrow quilt. So on the left is the printed panel. And you can see actually Eileen designed this uh, years ago. And you can see over there to the left, she printed a light blue fabric that she could then use for her binding. Um, so don't waste that space um, when you're doing a print, something like this. So make sure you're filling up that entire print piece. And then over on the right, you can see she actually quilted it. Um, and she even turned the name into a run stitch using one of our other programs so that it was quilted 
with that run stitch. But look at how cool. So this is a, a close up kind of a pan and uh, um, scan here of the, the finished product. So she quilted this on her embroidery machine. She designed it in my fabric designer, printed it and then um, actually quilted it with her embroidery machine. Now look, she put an actual uh, little st a strip of fabric or color, I should say, not fabric, in between the blocks there, which you certainly can do by doing the sashing option that's built in. So isn't that cool? So I just absolutely love that. So uh, so let's see if we've got any questions. And then um, I will show you how to create the size for that print mode of fabric uh, coming up next. So um, and then Kathy uh, Purdy says, uh, oh, my goodness, never noticed those tips. I know, Kathy, see, it's worth watching all software success because a lot of our tools are the same throughout the um, same throughout the the software. So I'm so glad that I was able to help you. So glad that I showed you something new today. So, and then Terry says, if you own dime programs such as block piecer, um, and then the, my quilt, uh, designer, can you use the blocks built into the software? Yes, you can. So Terry, as you know, any of our software works together, they are all standalone, except for we've got one new, uh, plugin that's not standalone, but every dime software, other than that one plug, Plugin is standalone, but if you own two pieces, three pieces, four pieces of our dime software, they all work together so you can use your features across each one. So absolutely. And that's exactly what's going on here too with uh, Eileen. If you um, saw the quilting on the Evan, she converted that to a run stitch. She could use her same text and convert that to a run stitch in the other uh, um, software. So, so yeah, isn't that really cool. So yeah, I love that. So, and then Linda says, how do you find a printer who fits on Primal? Oh, we answered that, Linda. We said to search, make sure you find one, you know, near you, uh, that you can get, uh, that fabric printed on. So, um, let's see what other, uh, questions we have. So Linda says, doesn't one of the other software allow you to make outlines automatically? It absolutely does. So that's our create outline tool. Um, and you can do that around a shape, but now an image, a background image, a magic wand might auto trace that. So, um, the background image, usually we have to auto uh, like manually trace it. But depending on what type of image you import, the magic wand sometimes will let you auto trace. Um, and the create outline feature will let you create outline around an object that's on the screen. So really good question. So when you design and send your fabric to be pr printed, do you own it for lack of better words? Or do you have a patent on your design and your artwork? Um, yes. So if you design your own printable uh, pattern, then yes, Yes, you own that as a designer. In my fabric designer software, if you use any of the built in artwork or the built in pattern fills, those are not uh, not your own, so to speak, because they're built into the software. They can be used for personal use. But if you design your own from scratch, like I did the um, plaid, I mean, that's mine. It's just, you know, rectangles. But if you're using any of the built in artwork that has already been created by someone else or the built in patterns, you know, those are not so but but if you're designing your own print, then absolutely. So another really good question from Jill. So thanks for asking. Um, and so I'm just looking through here. And so we just answered uh, um, about uh, um, Kathy's other question. So her comment about the, the tool, the shortcut, but she says, Kathy says, so do we need to save it at the size of the fabric we ultimately want? So when you do the export and it asks you the type of fabric uh, or the size of the fabric, then when it generates the file for you, it sets it uh, to that size. So when you export it, you're exporting it as the size of the print of the fabric that you need. So when you're designing, if you wanted to design a 56 inch wide piece of fabric where there's no repeats, then you could put in your 56 inches width. Uh, make sure you check with the printer about any margins um, also. Um, and then you could just place different objects on there that you want to print. But if it's a repeatable one, you're probably going to design in just one tile uh, like we did in the other one. So, but uh, another really good question. So, um, and then Juva Creations says, where do you find printers to print the fabric? So uh, Judah, we did say that earlier, but just as a reminder, so um, check 
on the internet. Just do a search for um, print on demand or fabric on demand, printing my own fabric. Any of those kind of combinations will bring up a ton of, of different um, printers. And a lot of them have a variety of different types of fabric. So you can print on all different uh, types of, of fabric. And then uh, um, Aileen says, is this um, printable? So is it washable? Sorry, is your print, Aileen said, is your printed fabric washable? Yes. So when you create the design in my fabric uh, designer, and you're generating a, a file that you will then upload to a fabric printer. They are printing your fabric just like the fabric that's printed for the um, um, your quilt store or those bolts that we buy. So it is a fabric printer. Um, again, usually a really wide print. Um, but yes, it is launderable the same way that you would wash your fabric. And you would launder it based on the type of fabric that you print. Because you can print not just cotton, but you can print lycra. You can print uh, canvas. You can print, you know, uh, polyester fabrics. Um, you know, so many different types. Twill. So whatever type of fabric that you're printing, the uh, printer, the laundering instructions for the fabric, they will uh, most likely send you for your print. So another really good question. So awesome. And, you know, we're talking about, like I said, big prints of fabric. Now let's talk about the print Moda printer from Brother. Now I don't own one. I have done some research to uh, figure out the size of the print that you need. Um, and I'm going to show you how to enter just uh, that size and different things that you can do. And so I want to show you with this one two different things because it'll also translate into other fabric as well. So the print Moda fabric printer from Brother. Again, I don't work for Brother. I don't have all the details, but I I thought that maybe some of you guys might own it. So I thought I would just give you a little uh, more details on it. But it prints a roll of fabric that's 11, I think, 0.6 inches wide that I checked by 1.4 yards, which is like 50.4 inches. And so you can print one print or you could print something smaller. You could print an 11 by, you know, uh, 11 by 20 inches, you know. And so, but that size print, let's design something for that print Moda printer. So I'm going to, um, let's do the quilt again, since we just left off that. And then we'll do just a blank one. Um, for this one, I am going to um, do a, the uh, size for that. So let's do our 36 wide, but let's do our 11.6 uh, is the height. So to give yourself a little bit of margin, you're probably just going to do like an 11 and it will print up to 50 inches long. So let's do that whole length. Okay. So let's say we're going to do a table runner here and I am going to do my blocks for my table uh, runner um, 11 inches. I'm going to do square. Um, for this one, I'm going to take my sashing away because it's thinking that I have, uh, the, the sashing was making it too large. So I took that away so we could kind of see. So now you can see with an 11 inch square block, it would print four of those blocks. And I've got a little bit of, uh, extra space down here at the bottom. So I'm actually going to put some sashing, um, in this row. So let's do oh, wrong one. Sorry. Let's put uh, some one inch sashing in here and you can see that I've got a little bit of uh, um, variation there. So let's do kind of like we did with that cheater quilt, but I'm going to show you something else you can do here with uh, my fabric designer. So before with the cheater quilt, we filled with a pattern. And we also filled with a solid color. So let's do a solid color again. Whoops, sorry, wrong one. Solid color right here and pattern right there. And I'm going to just select my light green and I'm going to put the light green in uh, the sashing. And I selected the light green by doing a right mouse click. Remember, that's something uh, uh, all of our software uses a right mouse click to select a different color chip. Now, for these, instead of doing a solid or a pattern, um, we've got blocks built in. So if I click this block option, it opens up a library. So when we were asking about those blocks for my quilt embellisher and my block piecer, we already have a block library for you. But if you have some that you say have you've created, you certainly can bring them in as well. So I'm just going to do something simple here so I can change the color. So let's do 
um, a like this pinwheel block here. And I'm going to click and fill this with this pinwheel. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So now I could literally print my own cheater panel on my brother print moda this would be a strip this would be a fun little table runner uh, that you can do i can change these colors if i ungroup my design i can select these colors separately or i could change it down here on my color chip so let's do something um a little springy so i'm going to do uh oh that's actually kind of cute look at that pink purple and green so i certainly can do that but if you want to ungroup Use your ungroup key up here and uh, you can select the individual pieces here. So maybe you want this to be um, like a background color that's kind of white. So let's do that. And let's do a different uh, block here. I'm going to delete this block and this block. And let's go back. All I did was press the delete on my keyboard. I'm going to go back into my block library by choosing select. And for this one, let's just do the four patch. So I'm going to do a four patch here and a four patch here. And then I'm just, I just click and it drops it right in my box and, uh, my, that I have built here. And again, if I do my ungroup, I can change these colors and I can also change the fabric. So let's change, uh, the hmm, what do we want to do here so let's do let's change this one here i'm going to ungroup it i'm just like doing some designing in my head here let's change the uh pinwheel again to this light background color and then uh for the purple for this one i'm just holding down my control key selecting each one and then i'm going to make this one a different color so maybe we're making a fun little uh spring uh, table runner uh, here. I'm going to do this as our background color again. I'm holding down my control key and I'm just selecting the blocks. Um, and then I'm just going to choose a, a different color. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And so let's do uh, like this turquoise. So I love it, right? So if you printed this on your uh, print moda printer, you could save this as a PNG or a JPEG um, in order to uh, print that. Um, it's going to print and you're ready to uh, just start your quilting on your boarding machine. Isn't that cute? Now, these blocks, you can also fill with fabric. So these don't have to be solid. So if I select these blocks and remember our pattern fill here, if I click on that, it opens up my library. If I go back into my My Fabric Designs, because these are uh, safe to print, and say I choose uh, something like this one here. I could click to fill that in. So you don't have to print solids. You certainly could print those patterns. But remember, as the question was asked, um, these are not, you know, those are, are copyright. You can use them for your personal use, but you can't print and sell the built-in fabric prints. So, but isn't that cute? Now, another thing that I think would be fun with your print uh, motor, motor printer. So if you just do the, the cloth size and you set this to say this 11 by 50, and click OK. Um, and actually, I'm going to do an undo and put that the other direction. So now, depending on which way you have to save your file, you might want to uh, save it in that orientation. But I want to design in this orientation here. Now, what if we wanted to design like a banner? So again, I'm going to go into my printable fabrics here and whoops, undo and uh, go back here into my My Fabric Design prints, go into the holiday. And there's some little balloons here. So I can click those for my background fill. Now, again, I set this for the complete size of my max of what that banner, that print would be for print moda. But then now we could do just like uh, Evan Morrow and we could add some text. So happy birthday. And I'm going to bring in a picture. And click OK. And then I'm going to resize this larger. Maybe put it to one side here and then you can put a picture here. So I'm going to do file and import uh, bitmap. And then I've got some pictures. You can use these same pictures. So in your C dime designs folders, C dime folder, sorry, you've got some images here. And under this folder called stitch snapshot, I'm just going to use this little picture here. So I could bring in the picture, resize it. Maybe this is Coco's birthday. How cute is that, right? Isn't that adorable? 
So you could print a little banner. And again, I set this for the size of that uh, print moto, but you can set it to any size. So isn't that cool? Okay, so now if you um, liked the presentation today, make sure that you like and subscribe uh, to our YouTube and our Facebook group. Most of, you, most of you guys know how to find us, but just in case you don't, watch this little short video. And when we come back from the video, um, I will show you uh, what we're going to be talking about next. And I'll also look at the questions so we can do one final Q&A. So take a look at this short video of how to uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube and Facebook. In this video, we'll show you how to subscribe to a YouTube channel and follow a Facebook page. Let's start with YouTube. First, open your web browser and navigate to youtube.com. Once you're on your home page, search for designs and machine embroidery in the search bar at the top of the screen. Click on it and go to the channel page. Once on the channel page, click the subscribe button. And that's it. You're now subscribed to the channel. Now, let's move on to Facebook. Once you're on your home page, search for designs and machine embroidery in the search bar at the top of the screen. When you find the page you want to follow, click on it and go to the page. Once on the page, click the three dots on the right side and select the follow button. And that's it. Now you're following the page. Thanks for watching. Okay, so make sure that you uh, do that if you're not already, which I bet most of you guys are. Um, I did see a couple of questions that popped up. So let me um, answer those uh, quickly before we see what's coming up on the next uh, software success. So first I want to say so that you guys know Joanne Bako. She is a brother ambassador and she said that the print moto comes with a printable cotton that is 11.6 wide by 194 inches long. So that roll of fabric is what she's saying is 194 inches long. So Joanne, um, if you're still uh, watching, what is the max that it will print? So that's the whole roll of fabric. So you get 194 inches of fabric. But from what I was reading, the the longest print that you could do is the uh, 1.4 yards. So, but I don't know for sure. So correct me if I'm wrong, if it'll print longer than that, I would love to hear that. So, um, so thanks for, for being here with us. So share that with us for sure. Um, and then my friend, Stephanie uh, Young says that she loves what software can do. I agree, Stephanie, if I didn't have it, I don't know where I would be. Uh, so, so glad that, uh, uh, that you agree. So, and then Kathy says, I guess we could print our own if we designed a bunch of eight and a half by 11. Yes, uh, to print fabric and then sew it together. You absolutely could. Um, so you could design that and print on an eight and a half by 11. There are printable fabrics out there that have been designed specifically for this for a long time. We use those to print photos because we didn't have an option to print larger. So another really, uh, really good comment. So, and then Delinda says, uh, was the software success on Tuesday, February 6th? I never got an invite. So on February the 6th, Linda, unfortunately I had laryngitis, so I couldn't talk. I could only squeeze out a whisper, but you didn't miss anything. All I did was shift this uh, presentation to today. So on the 6th of February, I was planning to do exactly what you saw me do today. So you didn't miss anything. We just had to cancel because I, I couldn't talk. I couldn't squeeze out a peep of uh, anything. I could just only do a whisper. So, so, uh, but thanks for the reminder because others may have not realized that as well. So I appreciate you. Uh, saying that. And then um, Eileen uh, Reichert says, is this a downloadable software? It is. So Eileen, you know, and you actually are part of one of my favorite dealers. I always love to support the dealers. Um, they are the reason that we're here. We wouldn't be able to do this without our local uh, shops. So support your local shop if you have one that carries Dime software. If you do not or you're further away, then yes, we do have our software, but most likely your local dealer will be able to give you um, the absolute best deal. And so, uh, and so then Joanne says, correction, the ro roll is the replacement for the trial size. So that 194 inch roll is the replacement for the trial size. So thank you for uh, clearing that up, Joanne. So still, if you uh, comment, can we actually print 194 inches on that uh, would be helpful. And then another question that I see is how can you, uh, can you explain how to bring in fabric and thread? So um, I'm not sure what you mean by bring in thread. Uh, 
thread. If you want to import fabric of uh, your own, you could take a, a photograph of it and then import that into the software if, if that's what you mean, uh, Laura. Um, and so, but with this, even if you take a picture, you're not going to be able to reprint that. We're really talking about printing. And so if you print that, you know, fabric that you took a picture of, it's probably copyrighted, but also the resolution of the print is not going to be uh, what you need it to be. So, um, so, but really good question. So feel free to, to clarify um, if you need more um, uh uh, information. And then Joanne says, not sure on the max length. Uh, I'll see what I can find out. So thank you, Joanne. Yeah, I thought I had read that uh, that the 1.4 yards was the, the longest it would print, which is still awesome um, because we could do a lot with that. And so, but thank you for clearing that up. So, okay, guys. So in um, the next software success, it will actually be on March the 4th. Fifth. Let me make sure I did not have that date incorrectly. Yes, March the 5th. And I'm going to be talking about my emoji stitches. Um, that is a program that is a fun, very simple program. It has a built in wizard that you can create an avatar or you can also generate um, uh, emojis. So it's really fun, really simple. A lot of you guys may have owned it. It was uh, um, a program that we had in our in-store events a long time ago. So I wanted to make sure that I give it uh, uh, where, you know, it's uh, screen time. But also remember, just like Kathy pointed out today, I always like to share something that translates to our other programs. So just because I'm talking about my emoji stitches on March the 5th doesn't mean that you wouldn't learn something. So make sure you join me um, for the next software success on March the 5th. And until then, I'm going to say thank you all for being here. I so appreciate your support um, and we will see you next time.